Hi, a film I saw recently that I missed on its original release was Murder on the Orient Express, um, Kenneth Branagh's adaptation of the Agatha Christie classic. The story, if you don't know it already, is that Hercule Poirot, the great fictional detective, is travelling from Istanbul to Paris on the famous train, the Orient Express, when the train is suddenly snowbound while journeying through Yugoslavia. And one night there is a mild kerfuffle in one of the cabins, and the following morning it turns out that one of the passengers, a rather unpleasant American man, has been killed, murdered in a seemingly frenzied knife attack. With the train completely sealed and no one uh, able to get on or get off, um, Poirot brings his uh, detecting skills to bear and trying to figure out which of the other passengers on the train could possibly be the culprit. Um, it's a film that's been adapted before many times, of course. There was a version in 1974, I think, with um, Albert Finney, which kick-started a whole franchise of um, Poirot films, and it's, of course, been adapted for the Agatha Christie's Poirot TV series with David Suchet. Uh, this new version is trying to relaunch it as a new franchise, and it feels like a franchise movie. It's a enclosed, tight detective story. The vast majority of it is set in only a couple of uh, carriages of a train, and yet there is so much effort going in to make it visually spectacular. There is so much CGI scenery, so much visual trickery, and so many swooping cameras. Um, and it looks as though it's trying really hard to not make you feel like you're watching a TV show. It has to be big and expansive. It's like showing off that they're able to do this in widescreen. And I felt it was totally out of step with the kind of story that it's trying to tell. The other issue I had is that the character of Poirot himself is rendered little more than a caricature. Um, I think I complained in a previous review of one of the later films in the previous franchise, and it might have been Evil Under the Sun, where Poirot was becoming too much of a, a comic character. And if anything, that would have been an improvement on how he's presented here, played by Branner. He's written as very schematic, as though they are desperate that the character should adhere to some kind of prescribed character from a textbook on screenwriting. So he has a troubled past, which is vaguely alluded to. He has a lost love, which is completely invented and has no bearing whatsoever on the story. And the focus is far too much on the character of Poirot and not on the mystery. Uh, people don't read uh, Poirot books, as far as I'm aware, or at least they don't generally read them, to uh, enjoy the company of the character of Poirot. They read them for the mystery and for the, uh, the complex process that goes into constructing and solving such a mystery. And the problem is that there is far too much focus on Poirot, and Poirot is, even gets a whole completely invented story where he's introduced solving a, a case in Jerusalem, which apparently has a coast in this version of the story. Jerusalem does not have a coast. Um, and uh, it's a shame because I felt some of the other performances were very fine. That It has an all-star cast with a, a range of major supporting players. Michelle Pfeiffer, who I thought was absolutely superb, really doesn't get the recognition she deserves as a character actress. Uh, Johnny Depp, Daisy Ridley, Josh Gad, Derek Jacobi, Judy Dench, Olivia Coleman has a tiny, tiny role. Again, completely unworthy of a performer of her talent. It's worth noting that a lot of her dialogue is in German, which she delivers flawlessly, which you very rarely hear from a non-German speaker. Um, but supporting performances to one side, the issue is that it's just not a credible version of the story. It's trying so hard to keep the audience's interest with visual spectacle because there is a, a concern that the uh, the intellectual weight of the story and the mystery is not engaging enough. That Poirot is such a schematic character. The whole thing has been turned into a, almost a cartoon to try and satisfy the whims of what people think a contemporary adaptation of a Christie story should look like. And the result is that 
it looks pretty bad. It's not a good film. It has several good performances, five in particular. Um, but really, this is Branner falling on his face, as he's done fairly consistently since he decided to become a blockbuster director. Um, I noticed that uh, the cutoff point appears to have been his remake of Sleuth. The original director of the first version of Sleuth, Joseph Mankiewicz, retired after making that film. And it's looking increasingly likely that um, Brenner probably should have done the same.